Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you this Sculpt Cloth Brush in Blender 2.83 which I believe was developed by Pablo. Now you can see here is the website, I've got it open. I'm going to be putting the link in the description below. So all you have to do is come here and this is for Windows 64. You can come here, click on the download, download the zip folder and then the zip folder is going to open up on your downloads, wherever your downloads go. Extract that zip folder and you're going to have this new build of Blender 2.83 which has the new cloth sculpting brush in it. So go ahead, open that up and open up this version of Blender. So it's Blender 2.83 and you'd have to do that to be able to get this. This is a very new. So once you're in there, you can, you can see if we go to your um, sculpting, there's going to be a new brush here and it is this one here which currently doesn't have a name because it's really new and it's still kind of in development. But I'm going to be showing you how we can, the basics of this, how it works and some of the cool things you might be able to do with it in the future. So let's get right into that. Okay, so let's try and do something with our default cube. So let's just quickly go back to our layout and with our default cube selected, we're just going to tab into edit mode. And if you right click and you just click on subdivide, you can come down here to your subdivision tab and let's add in 50. So just type in an amount of 50, which is really dense, but the denser this is, the better it's going to be for the simulation because this, this cloth brush kind of works like a simulation. So with that done, we've got some nice subdivisions in here. Um, let's go to our sculpting and we can now select this new brush. And some things to keep in mind is some of the basic things here. If you were just to go ahead and sculpt with this, you're not gonna see much happening. And the reason is because it, the mass of this really matters. And if the mass of this is really high, it, it's the, the cloth brush is having a hard time moving vertices around. So the lower you set this value here, the more of an effect you're gonna see. So I might have to go even lower. And if you increase the radius a little bit as well, that can help. So let's quickly give that a shot and drag that. You can see now we're getting some deformation. Now, one thing you can do, you'll notice here that the strength is at a max of one and you can't drag it up any higher. But if you actually come in here and you click on it and you can type in the value, so if I type in two, it is now much stronger. So just a little tip there. Sometimes when you can't drag the slider any further, Blender does allow you to click and manually type in a number. So just a little useful tip there. So you can see here, this is the brush and um, it is really cool because what's so what, what, what happens, say for example, you click on a surface and you drag the little slider, it's kind of performing like a cloth simulation. And, it, and it, this can be really useful for all sorts of applications, especially when it comes to like people who are really into character stuff and like, um, like bedding or sheets or pillows. So some of the archivist guys might really find this useful. Um, I could even see maybe using this and doing like a, a shape key and making like a fake cloth simulation that doesn't require any sort of baking. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of really useful applications for this. And one thing you can also do if you wanna make this look a bit better, just go to your layout again, go to your object and just enable shade smooth. Let's go back to our sculpting. So you can see this is how it works. It is really amazing and the accuracy of this is quite astounding. Like the very, <laughs> like you don't have to go and get a brush like we'd have to do in the old days and come here and manually try and sculpt in some sort of um, geometry. I mean, let's get a bit of a smoother brush. I mean, this is really gonna be a big game changer and this actually is really exciting. When I saw this, I could hardly believe it. So that is really gonna be useful. And I think, I can already think of quite a few tutorials we could be doing in the future where we can actually be putting this to use. Like I said, I can totally see using this to do like a fake cloth simulation where we use a shape key and using a differentiation differ, differential between some of the different shape keys, you can make like a fake looking cloth sim. So I'm looking really forward to that. I hope you guys have found this tutorial useful. One little quick thing I can show you, you're, you can also come in here if you want a bit more control, you can come to your, um, your mask tool here. And if you click on the mask tool and you come here, you can kind of mask an area that you don't want to be affected. You can hit control and then do it as well and that'll undo it. But I'm just gonna pin a bit of cloth here and now I'm gonna go back to this tool. And if I don't want this area here to be affected, for example, I can come here, kind of drag down and it'll leave that area alone. So once again, that I can already see that being very useful for stuff like archivists and clothing. Okay, I've said enough. I hope you guys liked this little introduction to this and I'll see you guys later for another tutorial. I've got a whole bunch of awesome motion graphic stuff coming up on this channel, which I know you guys are absolutely gonna love. I'll see you guys later.